Good afternoon. Thank you for joining Dynascape in the Eight Pillars of Successful Landscape Companies webinar series. It's a free webinar series offered to the Dynascape community. Today we are looking at webinar number two in this three-part series. We're looking at sales and marketing principles that lead to real wins. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day. I'm Joe Salemi with Dynascape Software. For those of you that are new to the Dynascape community, uh, unsure what we do, or for those that have you, those of you that have been around and um, just want a refresher, Dynascape uh, provides fantastic landscape design and business management software for landscape professionals. Dynascape design, color, and sketch 3D all go towards a fantastic dyna, uh, landscape design suite of software that allow you to present um, job-winning landscape designs to your client base. Um, we know that clients who use Dynascape software to present their drawings win jobs. It's something they tell us all the time. We also offer a landscape business operating system called Manage360, and it handles everything from uh, when a lead comes into your business to capturing all the details, um, following through your sales pipeline, doing your estimating, your job tracking, job costing, your invoicing and final reporting, all while recovering overhead. Uh, that's Manage360. I'm Joe Salemi, uh, Vice President of Dynascape Software. It's a little bit about me. Uh, I've been in the industry a long time, been studying landscape companies a very long time. Uh, really appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your day uh, to spend it with uh, myself and with Dynascape. So a little bit of details about this webinar series. Uh, Tuesdays uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern. So last week was our first one. Today is our next. And next week on the 19th will be our third and final installment. Each webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the Dynascape website. And as soon as we get it posted uh, following uh, the live air, uh, I will uh, email you out a link. If you have questions, definitely please ask. Um, would love to be able to uh, answer as many questions as I possibly can. Um, there's a little Q&A um, comment box uh, in your Zoom control panel. Uh, just type your questions in there. I'll do my absolute best to answer each one. If I don't get to it, um, I'll definitely post webinar, uh, connect with you, and uh, do my best to answer your question. Some big news, and uh, for those that uh, registered uh, in time for last week, I think, uh, just, it was the day after, it was on the 6th that I got a uh, notification that um, we've been approved by the NALP, the National Association of Landscape Professionals, for CEUs. So if you are uh, certified through NALP uh, and you need CEUs um, to continue with your certification, each webinar qualifies for one CEU. So their kind of rule of thumb is one hour of education equals one CEU. Uh, and their comment to me was that you are responsible for submitting your own CEUs, but if you need any help, just let me know and I'd be happy to facilitate. So on deck for today, uh, for our eight pillars of successful landscape uh, companies uh, is proven sales and marketing principles that lead to real wins. And, you know, this isn't just isn't, uh, you know, a bunch of concepts thrown together. It's really after watching um, tons of, landscape companies succeed and fail and seeing what the successful ones are doing right and seeing what the ones that uh, um, didn't, that weren't as successful uh, and what their challenges were. Uh, so we're going to be talking about sales effectiveness. We're going to look at seven effective sales techniques um, using a sales tracking system, the sales experience of so actually developing a process, um, developing a five-step marketing plan, the no-nonsense kind of way, uh, developing a content strategy, um, looking at the social equation of all of that, understanding uh, return on investment for your marketing dollars, and going into really around sales effectiveness. So for those that uh, kind of want uh, uh, a good overview of today's webinar, this is what we're going to be looking at. And I've kind of slipped in a surprise at the end that I think is a real nugget of gold that I was able to take away uh, when I learned about how this one landscape company was generating a significant amount of leads. 
So that's uh, coming up at the end. So let's talk about sales effectiveness uh, through process methodology uh, and how you can develop a sales process that is, um, first of all, it's going to lead to um, you know, being able to follow a process so you're not just all over the place and um, one that has, is actually going to follow through and uh, help you increase your uh, closing ratio. So let's focus on the process and methodology, but really, <laughs> why the heck should you even bother? You know, especially when, you know, there's lots of word of mouth coming in, um, sales are pretty good, um, but, you know, all the, uh, the big thing these days is talking about how to scale your landscape business. And um, a lot of these techniques and tactics and strategies all go towards uh, helping you scale uh, your landscape business. So first of all, it's improved efficiency. You know, you're not spinning your wheels uh, when you have a, a process in place. Um, you're gonna feel, first of all, you're gonna feel better, or you are gonna be better organized, but you're gonna feel uh, like you're organized. And, you know, there's, there's this whole um, uh, psychological study that's done with children. Um, and, uh, it's all around their performance in school. Their grades are directly affected by how clean their closet is. Uh, and it's a you tie that in. And it's like, yeah, you know, if they, if you think about it, if their closet is disorganized, I mean, who, whose closet isn't, but if you have an organized closet, you tend to be uh, perform better somewhere else in this correlation between the study of uh, school age children and the cleanliness or organization of their closet. So think of your sales process as your closet in this case and just being better organized that way. Um, first, and then there's increased revenue and being able to forecast. So when you're using a, a sales management system or like a CRM uh, and uh, being able to manage what uh, leads come in, uh, following them through the sales funnel uh, and um, tracking their conversion rate, uh, and based on your history, being able to forecast, um, you know, your sales pipe for coming months, quarters, and, you know, in, in fact, next season. And then having the continuous improvement approach. It's really important that, uh, you know, you just continue to take stock of what you're doing and um, really uh, understand the, uh, the process in which, you know, you're doing things like, how are you doing this? And then, how can you get better at what you're doing? So this is a, uh, a sales process that I've seen a number of landscape companies use, um, and it works really to help you scale. So if you're a uh, if you're the owner and you're the only one doing sales, you know it can kind of feel like you're all over the place, and you know um, in your big sales season, it can definitely feel like you're just barely keeping your nose above water as you're treading. But um, you know. Having this process will really help you um, organize your life, uh, organize um, your sales um, part of your organization, and um, can really help you understand what leads are at what point within this uh, process. So first we're dealing with um, qualifying and targeting. So, you know, when someone calls in or, you know, submits a... Um, a request through your website or, you know, messages you on a social platform, that's a real opportunity to, um, to vet them. You know, is there, think about it in terms of, should I be spending time with you? Are you worth my time? And um, if you can qualify them, if your website's doing a good job at qualifying, um, and if you are asking the right questions, because that's what it will come down to, um, you'll be able to qualify that lead that comes in. Um, then coming down to contact and need analysis, and you think of that as um, you know, your first phone call or like a discovery call. Um, not always is your first contact um, going to be necessarily a site visit although that could be part of this under the needs analysis. Uh, as you have that discovery call or meeting, uh, if, the, uh, if the scope of the opportunity is big enough to, uh, to warrant that first meeting, uh, first contact to be a meeting, uh, to go and then have that needs analysis. And really you're looking at um, 
you know, is it going to be a right fit? And fit is a big part of um, landscape work. First of all, um, you know, do your services fit with what your prospective client is looking for? Uh, and the second part of that, but equally as important, is is the client a good fit for you? And do your personalities match? And uh, are they willing to work with uh, uh, someone like you? And if they are, then you know that's uh, a good part of the uh, the battle that's won. So I really like this part um, within uh, the sales process uh, and having strategic communication. And this can happen in a couple of ways because um, you know often between um, conduct, you know having a, a, a meeting in, in person um, and you know doing some site analysis as you get ready for um, putting the other design and a proposal and doing the presentation, um, there can be a number of weeks that go by before you have that proposal presentation, design presentation with them. So if this is a situation where um, you don't have the uh, uh, any communication going in between, you could have a week, a month um, before you talk to them again. And so having some communications either through social um, or uh, setting up some marketing automation, which we'll talk a little bit about, definitely gets them as in, into your ecosystem. And it could even be as simple as um, if it's going to be, you know, five or six weeks before you get back to them with a, a design and a proposal to do the presentation, um, then even just kind of a midway um, saying, hey, I was just thinking about you, um, really looking forward, we're making some progress on your design, um, maybe ask them a couple of questions about preference, um, so that it keeps the prospective client engaged in the process so that large chunks of time don't go by uh, without communicating. Uh, then, of course, you have the uh, proposal and presentation. Some companies, landscape companies that are large enough uh, may have a presentation center in their office. Um, that's a really nice way to present both the design and the proposal. This gives you full control of your surroundings. You know, you know what the uh, the equipment's going to be like. Um, you have control over, uh, you know, no knocks on the door or interruptions uh, versus going to someone's, uh, your prospective client's home and, uh, you know, dealing with the dog or knocks on the door or something like that. Uh, then, of course, you get into uh, the negotiating and closing phase. So often between uh, the proposal stage and uh, so it's between stage four and five, you get into the point of, okay, they, you presented, they may not make a decision right away, uh, want some time to think about it. You're gonna get into uh, the negotiation phase and it could be you know, around budget. Um, you're gonna deal with objections at this point. Um, handling objections needs to be, is, is an absolute art form. So you need to be up on, what the top objections are going to be and then uh, you know going towards closing the deal once you've closed that deal you're not going to get into account management and you know communication it's almost like the strategic communication should be a foundational layer uh, around the entire process and in my mind it kind of is because um, through uh, account management is very strategic communication. You're going to keep your new uh, client uh, in the know with what's going on, um, when they should expect, um, you know, the first cr uh, crew to arrive, um, you know, any kind of potential challenges. Uh, the more upfront you can be about um, what's going to happen during their work, um, you know, the better the experience is going to be for you. We talked a lot of, in the last webinar about um, client experience and this is a huge part of that and sure it takes a little bit of extra time but I'll tell you uh, in all the landscape companies that uh, I've talked to specifically about this they all said that the more communication they have um, during this phase between when they close the deal and before they actually show up uh, and you know through the job as well and communication um, along that uh, pathway is very critical to the success of the work. You know, obviously you're following through with quality work um, 
and doing what you say you're going to do. But a, a big part of this is communication. And uh, so many landscape companies um, really falter at this point is where um, they fail to communicate the next steps. The better the experience is, um, starting at number one all the way all the way through the sales process, um, the more referrals that you're going to get. And you know, land, the professional landscape industry is uh, significantly driven by um, existing client referrals. And you know, it's just one of those things where you know that's not something that's ever going to go away. But it's how do you foster more and how do you reward um, your current clients? for offering your referrals um, for a business that actually closes. And um, that, that's just one of the things where, you know, if landscape companies get better at, um, you know, actually asking for referrals, then, you know, it's going to help you drive and scale your business to a point where, you know, you're, you want it, you're, you're at a point where you want it, where you want to be. So if we were to simplify this a little bit, and I kind of did another uh, chart where it's got like a five-step process. Um, you think about it in terms of uh, initial contract and rapport building. It's like your first uh, contact, and, you know, you're kind of feeling each other out and getting to know each other. And, you know, it's like the courting phase of a relationship. Um, and then you get into... You know what is the per, the prospect uh, prospective client actually looking for? What kind of work are they thinking of getting done? Are they just kind of you know getting their feet wet with uh, learning about what it's like to get landscape work done, or are they super serious and you know wanting to go ahead? Do they actually have a budget in mind? And getting into where you're at the point of where you can offer a solution, and whether it's right to offer a solution or not. Um, you know, going through that fit analysis where you're presenting a, and then presenting a design and a proposal. Uh, handling objections, and really it's working through the details. And objections is a whole nother side of this um, that we really aren't getting into, but one that's super important to think about is there's a ton of objection, maybe not a ton, but there's quite a few objections that um, are really more like complaints than objections. And if you think of it in terms of, you know, when you offer the design in a proposal and they see the actual amounts that it takes to get, you know, an outdoor kitchen uh, done the right way by a professional landscape company, um, and they get a little bit of sticker shock and they say, wow, that's really expensive. That may not necessarily be an objection. A lot of people in sales think of it in terms of objections, but really it's just a complaint. It's just wow, that's really expensive. I don't know if I can do this. Well, you know, that's where you take the opportunity to think of it, to help them think through what, what it looks like to pay for something like that or start um, dissecting a little bit and say, if we did this, we could do it this way. If we don't do that, then, you know, or we can phase it in and, you know, this could be a multi-year kind of work project. And then the follow-up. So in between, you know, these processes here, what we didn't talk about in the last one, um, was kind of this purgatory where you've presented, you've negotiated a little bit, you've handled some objections, and then there's silence. Well, what happens when there's silence? It's key that there's follow-up. Um, and I'm going to show you a slide in the next little while that uh, we'll talk exactly about statistics around follow-up and what it takes to close deals. So in this particular case, you got to follow up um, and uh, it's super key. It's part of that communication foundational layer. And when there's that great experience, you're going to get repeat business. They're going to come back to you uh, either season after season or when they're not ready to do their next phase in their large project. And they're going to refu refer you to their friends, their family, uh, their neighbors. Um, so think of this as like a simplified version of the uh, previous slide. So here's that sales uh, statistics I was talking about. And you know, we talk about salespeople in this, but think of yourself as the salesperson. If you're doing the majority of sales in your organization, if you don't have account managers or um, you know, dedicated salespeople, then you are the salesperson, right? If you're generating the revenue. Um, think about this, 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect. So almost half of the prospects that come in are not followed up with. 
And uh, as we look through some of these stats, think to yourself, does this apply to you? Or are you not following up with some of the people that have raised their hand and said, hey, I'm interested in getting some work done by you? Um, and if that's the case, then, uh, you know, really it's start, time to start thinking about how uh, you can turn that around and develop a process in order to uh, start following up with people. 25% of people, of salespeople make a second contact and stop. So they reach out and follow up and then that's it. 12% of, of salespeople only make three contacts and then stop. And then 10% of salespeople make more than three contacts and that's it. Um, but on the opposite side of that, on the closing side, only 2% of sales are made on the first contact. 3% of sales are made on second, you know, and down the list. But when the, the, the important thing to look at is 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact, fifth to 12th. So the amount of times that you need to connect with your prospect in order to, to, to nurture that uh, deal as it goes along the way can be between five and 12 times. So if you've contacted them a couple times and you know you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, just know that it's part of the process and you need to keep communicating and you need to, uh, to keep in contact and stay relevant. So let's look at some really effective sales techniques that are, um, are, are really well uh, suited for uh, the landscape industry. Um, be systematic about generating leads and where you generate them from. Um, We'll talk about in a in a later slide and um, where some of those leads can come from. But um, think about where the majority of your leads are coming from now. Or are they coming mostly from referral? Uh, is that a, a sustainable way to forecast your business? You know, hoping that you know the uh, the great clients that you have are uh, referring enough business to you. And how do you encourage that? So be really systematic about generating your leads and. Knowing if you have a projected revenue of, let's say, you know, 1.25 million for this season, how many leads do you need to get in the pipeline to be able to close that amount of money? So, you know, if you have a 30% closing rate, then, you know, you're going to need a lot of leads in the pipeline in order to be able to close that 1.25 million. Know your sales cycle. And so one of the ways to to understand what your sales cycle looks like is take the last 20 deals that you've closed. When did they initially get in contact with you and when did they close and take the average of that? Um, and that'll give you your sales cycle. Knowing your sales cycle will give you a real good understanding of when you need to start um, initiating some of your lead generation work uh, and some of your uh, marketing strategies uh, to put in place so that these leads are coming into your pipeline at the right time so that you're closing the deals at the right time. Knowing your numbers, in this case, what the numbers mean is knowing how many leads in the funnel that you need uh, in order to close the, the amount of revenue on a monthly and quarterly basis. Uh, actively seeking referrals. Um, so when you uh, close a prospective client, um, one of the things that you should be asking once they close is, or at least maybe when the job finishes is do you, uh, would you be able to put me in touch with um, three people who you think could benefit from our work? And, you know, you'd be surprised by the amount of referrals that come your way. Um, focus on securing appointments. So this is one of the things that, uh, that really uh, excites me about, you know, providing a software solution to landscape professionals um, prov is making sure that you get in touch with the people that, you know, are raising their hands and saying, Hey, I'm interested in getting some work done for you or by you. You know, obviously everybody that raises their hand to say, please, um, you know, do some work for me uh, is not, not always going to be a right fit or doesn't always have the right budget. But in a lot of cases, they may have the right budget. They may be the right fit, but a lot of these leads are not being followed up with. For me, um, I tried to hire a landscape company, I think about five years ago, um, where I live, and I had uh, four of them come in, quote, 
and um, I had the right budget. I knew what the, the job was should cost roughly. And uh, I thought my budget was in line, but um, you know, the, the market is really busy uh, where I live. And um, out of the four that came to uh, do the initial meeting, uh, only uh, one came back with a quote and um, it was like they didn't even listen. So I ended up doing the work myself, but if you follow up uh, and focus on securing appointments and uh, doing that, uh, having that process built around you so that qualified leads don't slip through the cracks, uh, you'll be able to really scale uh, your business. And, you know, I talked about this before is um, get ready for the objections because they are a big part of your sales process and being able to handle them. You hear about these objections all the time, like, oh, I'm working with somebody else. Well, are they really, are you really working with someone else? Or um, is it because you just don't know how good we are? You know, there's a lot of um, ways to deal with an objection like that. Or uh, I was originally looking at getting some landscape, landscape work done, but I'm just too busy right now. This is where you make it really easy to do business with you uh, and taking and helping them understand that they're the fact that they're busy shouldn't impede the process of you being able to provide landscape services for them. So just make it really easy to do business. And the fact that they're too busy goes away um, or just isn't a good time, uh, make it a good time. So um, there's, there's lots and lots of ways to be able to do that. And it goes down to just making it really easy to do business with you. Um, if they need to sign a contract, then you know, have give them a way to do it digitally, um, so that maybe you don't need a meeting. Uh, there, there's just lots of ways to increase the convenience level, so that it's easy to do business with you. And then you know, send me the material, send me material first, and I'll take a look at it, and we can talk later. And when someone says that, they never <laughs> will talk to you later. So um, make sure that you know you get a commitment right then and there. And it doesn't have to be a commitment to sign the deal, but it could be a commitment to have another meeting or have another phone call uh, to talk about the prospective work. But understanding and taking stock of what the objections are and you know the frequently, um, the frequent objections that you experience, that's really where um, you can get good at handling those. And practice and practice your responses and so that you know you just it becomes second nature and muscle memory when someone says you know what i'm just I, i'm i think i'm going to deal with someone else or i'm too busy or it's not a good time or you know send me a proposal and i'll take a look at it and then the final part of this is follow up and listen so being a good listener um, really goes a long way and taking notes uh, as you listen so that you can reference later uh, is a really, really good and uh, um, proven sales technique that helps close deals. So let's look at uh, some other ways that you can help grow your business. Um, ask questions and listen. So ask really open-ended questions, and this can be throughout the entire process. Um, but, you know, as you start to get to know your prospective client, um, you know, ask some open-ended questions, you know, what's your, what's your long-term vision for uh, enjoying your property um, and those kinds of things and really listen and take notes and uh, apply those to the design. Um, it's an opportunity to really showcase your full potential. And so many landscape companies uh, have just beautiful, beautiful photography and video uh, that showcases their work. Um, a landscape company that I uh, was doing some consulting with uh, has a coffee table book. And so they hired a professional photographer that just did stunning, stunning photography uh, of their projects. They just had fantastic clients that would let them come in and um, spend a significant amount of time taking uh, photos. And the, uh, the photography was just beautiful and they turned it into a coffee table book. And for the clients that, um, were the right fit. They offered and used that during um, the sales uh, presentation and gave an under, a, a prospective client an understanding of the type of work that they do. And, and 
that experience was just a little bit different than looking at a gallery on a website or sending them to your uh, Pinterest uh, account so that they could get some inspiration there or uh, showing them some of your uh, in-progress work on your Instagram account, uh, stuff like that. But showcase your full potential. This particular landscape company um, had a beautiful coffee table book and it was probably um, 18 inches uh, wide by... Uh, let's call it eight or nine inches high. And uh, it was one photo per page of the landscape project and just absolutely stunning. Assume the sale. So this isn't like assume being like having giant ego around assuming the sale. But if you talk in terms of uh, not if you're going to do this and, you know, if you were to do this and if, if you were to have our services, Talk in terms of when we do our work for you, when this happens, when you're enjoying your new backyard. It paints a different picture for your prospective client and not doesn't put it in, in, a, in a frame of, um, it doesn't put it in a frame of, you know, this might happen. Because if you're thinking in terms of, I don't know if they're going to go ahead with it or not, and really you don't, but if you think in terms of, Let's paint a picture of what it would look like when they have the outdoor living space that we're going to create for them. Then, you know, it just changes the mindset and um, the frame of mind that the prospective client will be in. And, and it just leads to uh, an easier closed down uh, line. Stand out from your competition is a big, uh, big way to. Um, help your prospect know that what you're doing um, is professional and that you're serious about what you do uh, and you have the highest quality standards. So stand out from your competition. There's lots and lots of ways to do that. You know, first of all, that coffee table book is an incredible way. Um, but maybe it's through uh, having a 3D representation or visualization of the project. Uh, it's um, maybe doing a VR experience, a virtual reality experience. Um, some of these things are hard to do at a prospective client's uh, home, uh, easier to do in a, uh, in a presentation center at your office. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways to stand out, but find your own way and how you can stand out from the other uh, landscape companies that might also be um, included in the, uh, in the process. Tell your story visually. So, I mean, the, the landscape industry is so visual and has so many opportunities to, to highlight the work that you do, uh, whether it's through social channels, uh, Instagram and Pinterest being the most visual uh, out of them all, um, using video, um, hire a videographer that uses drone um, that uses drones to do uh, photo photography and video work. And, you know, um, have a lot, a significant amount of post-production work added to that. The more polished your video, um, the more professional it makes you look. So tell your story visually uh, and help your clients understand who you are and help your prospects understand who you are and what you do and why you do it. It keeps coming up, right? Um, overcoming objections because this is one of the hardest things to get good at it. But once you are good at it, um, it becomes second nature. So overcome objections is really important. Um, don't fear giving away too much up front. Um, there's a whole notion of um, the consultative sale. And um, you think in terms of, um, you know, you being the, uh, the educator or, you know, think of it even in terms of um, Star Wars where, you know, your prospect is Luke Skywalker and you are Yoda and you're just trying to, you know, pull the Jedi out of Luke and, you know, get him to his full potential. You're going to arm your prospects with the most knowledge that you, that they can get to be able to make a decision uh, and coach them along the way with what is right and what is wrong when it comes to um, getting professional landscape work done. If it's the first time that they're doing that. Um, Understand what motivates your customers to buy. Uh, I mean, that's a big deal is trying to understand what their motivation is um, and understanding their reasoning, why they want to get work done. Uh, 
and you know really uh, for you as a as a landscape business leader to be able to fulfill on that and so taking the opportunity to uh, listen and ask questions about what their motivation is uh, is really key and then don't be afraid to push for a decision um, you know the the process can only go on for so long uh, you know you're gonna have to move on at some point um, but um, part of the process and part of the discussion is moving your prospect along the process to get down to a decision. All of this rolls up into a call to action. And so pushing for a decision, don't be afraid to do that. And then always over deliver. And so all the way through um, highlighting the quality of your work, uh, in the showing that in the quality of your presentation, um, and then when you win the project and over deliver on the quality and uh, what you said you were going to, um, the the intention here is to delight um, your customer. And so when I when you have a delighted customer is when they're going to refer you. So just make sure that uh, you're finding ways to over deliver that's um, providing value, but maybe not additional cost. Let's look at um, marketing. So we've taken a look at sales. Let's take a look at marketing now and you know, process methodology and return on investment. And at the end of the day, you're gonna spend marketing dollars uh, so that you can get uh, a return and generate revenue. Um, so let's look at developing this five step, no nonsense plan. Um, first of all, we're gonna do a situational analysis um, or a SWOT analysis. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, in you know the recent history, when was the last time that you created a you developed a SWOT analysis for your landscape business? Um, so for your strengths, think about in in terms of um, internally what do you do well, um, and for your weaknesses, what are those things that you need to work on in your business to be able to deliver uh, a better product overall in you know in terms of um, your maintenance services and your um, design build work and then on the external side what are the opportunities that you have that are uh, facing your landscape company what trends uh, out there are creating more opportunity for you is that in terms of outdoor kitchens is it water features um, you know what are the trends that are popular at the moment that are going to offer some opportunity for you. So take stock of those. And then what are the threats uh, that your landscape company is facing at the moment? What are obstacles that are preventing you from scaling at the moment uh, on an external factor? And so really take stock of what they are and come up and when you do that, you have developed your SWOT analysis. It gives you an understanding of your strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, and uh, threats. I'm going to develop a target market profile. So who is the audience that you're going after? Um, you know, are you, do you do high-end work? Um, or are you doing smaller jobs that, um, you know, for those that, um, you know, want to do like a front yard uh, enhancement, uh, you know, walkway, foundation planting, new lawn kind of thing? Uh, or are you doing luxury landscape, uh, you know, estate kind of work? Um, so understand who your market is and develop a profile um, that helps you understand who they are. You're gonna set clear marketing objectives. So what are the things that you actually want to do as a result of your marketing activities? Generate new leads, um, generate better leads, uh, generate um, more qualified leads, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, and determine your strategy, your go-to-market strategy and um, marketing strategy. And um, so determine what that is. And then create a financial plan because there's got to be money that supports all of that, right? And think in terms of purpose-based marketing. So why are you going to do the things that you do? Um, and having purpose helps you stand out amidst all the noise. I mean, there's tons and tons of information out there um, about the you know top five trends for uh, outdoor kitchens and top five patio tips. And so there's tons and tons of uh, noise that's out there. And uh, having 
um, purpose-based marketing helps you stand out amidst all of that. Uh, your clients or prospects, do you want more than a superficial uh, connection? They want to build a real relationship. Um, and so do that and your marketing will help facilitate that. Um, good marketing helps you tell your story and um, remember what uh, Simon Sinek uh, said in his TED talk and his book, Start With Why. Uh, if you haven't seen that, definitely uh, check out the uh, TED talk and get the book, it's just fantastic. Uh, the gist of um, Start With Why is people buy why you do it, not what you do. They buy why you do it, not what you do. So they want to know who are the people, what's the team that drives this company, who are they, and why do they, why, why are they doing what they do? Um, you know, and if you think about it in terms of what your why is, and if you haven't developed your why, start to think about that, because uh, people want more than just a superficial connection. And a long-term client is your end goal, so you're not. Um, looking for just a quick transaction and be on with it and you're looking for a long-term client because think in terms of um, uh, customer lifetime value um, over the course of you know um, seven to ten years uh, what's the value of that client how many additional jobs or uh, additional maintenance work is going to come out of that existing client so um, think in terms of long-term versus short-term um, as your goal and marketing really is a form of storytelling so this is the opportunity for you to tell your story and you know if you have a real interesting story about either how your business started or how you got into the landscape business uh, and talk about why uh, you do what you do um, use your marketing to tell that story and use your marketing to inspire your own team you know, having a, a motivated um, team really goes towards uh, increased productivity and efficiencies uh, and over, comes overall with uh, being able to boost your profits. So inspire your own team um, through your marketing. So part of, um, you know, a great marketing strategy for a landscape company is to have a content strategy. I mean, you, landscape, Businesses are so knowledge rich. Um, help share that knowledge and put that into great content um, that you can share with your community, whether it's um, through your social platforms, through email marketing, um, those kinds of things. But, um, you know, first of all, set your mission, develop your mission and set your goals. You know, what are the things that you want to be able to accomplish? Why are you doing that you want to do? It? Um, you know, developing that strategic plan. You know, who do you want to reach? How will you deliver the content to them? What platforms are you going to deliver it to them? Um, how will you achieve and measure uh, your targeted results? Um, so if, if you can't measure it, it's not worth doing. Um, establish KPIs. And, um, so those are uh, key performance indicators. So what are the measurements that you're going to use? So establish those um, and know your audience. So um, understand who you're going to be talking to and um, why you're talking to them and develop your story around that. Develop your content around who your audience is. Uh, you can assess your current position. So uh, from that perspective, understanding, you know, what's your uh, brands unique value personality so um, think in terms of brand voice what does uh, what does the sound of your brand uh, what does that sound like um, you know it's more of a fun style more of a you know educator style uh, so think of it in terms of um, that so uh, understand where you are from a brand perspective um, determining what the best content channels are for you um, I know one client, and we'll uh, look at them in a second, um, their best content channel is through their own blog uh, and then sharing that through social. Um, and uh, they've just had tremendous success uh, doing that. So um, understand what the, your best channel uh, channels are. And, you know, is it through your own email list of clients and prospects? 
Um, are you just doing a rock star job with social and that's, that's your best content channel? Um, so really understand where the best spots to do that are. Um, decide on your content type. Uh, you know, are going to be articles, are going to be videos, um, they're going to be how to's. Um, are you, and again, are you going to take that more uh, educator style? Um, going to be the uh, professor in the classroom or uh, more of a fun kind of, you know, how to kind of content style? Um, identify and allocate resources. So, what are all the things that you need in order to? Um, deliver on a content strategy. Uh, someone, first of all, someone that's gonna develop the content, so either write or record the videos. Someone to do the production on the videos um, and get whatever you've written um, on your blog or on your social media accounts, uh, and those kinds of things. So identify and allocate resources and dollars are associated with those resources. So uh, all allocate a budget to that as well. Um, and then create a, co a content calendar. So plan out when um, you're going to deliver uh, on your content so that it's not just kind of an ad hoc, you know, um, schedule a, a weekly or a monthly blog post. Um, you can schedule out, um, there's tools that allow you to schedule out Facebook posts and Instagram posts um, so that you don't have to do it ad hoc. Uh, you can really be strategic about uh, the work that you're doing. And then create the content. So, you know, <clears throat> having a strategy is good, but uh, unless it comes down to actually developing the content, um, it is really important. So create that content. And then finally distribute and market. So promote the fact that you have content. And uh, if you can't measure it, then you shouldn't do it. So measure what you're going to be uh, doing. Um, Let's look at the uh, social equation. The social is a massive part of uh, getting content uh, out there in the ether and you kind of want that to be out there in the world. Um, so how do you get your content out there? Social is a massive way and you know, just the way that Facebook and Instagram works is that it generally pulls in the people around you and that are connected to you. So first of all, be where your target market is use lots and lots of visuals and uh, some of the things that we've found that um, some uh, landscape industry uh, social media influencers uh, are really successful with is uh, in progress type of work so what they have uh, told me is that their clients really um, like to see videos of in progress work so they know what it's like to do work with them they know how they, the landscape company operates. So in progress shots is important as final or as, you know, finally built uh, shots. Show that progress work, it's really important. Um, include your audience in your process. People love to know what it takes to actually produce a complex landscape project. So include your audience in that process and tell your audi audience why you're doing what you're doing. Um, you start with uh, some excavation and uh, say preparation work. But when you're doing a particular type of work, tell your audience why you're doing what you are and um, help them understand what, it, what level of complexity goes into doing landscape work. So one of the things that um, one of our clients does really, really well, uh, shout out to uh, Nick McCullough of uh, McCullough Landscape, uh, and his blog, thinkingoutsidetheboxwood.com, if you have a chance, go and uh, visit that blog. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I know Nick through the Association of Professional Landscape Designers. He is a certified um, landscape designer through APLD and sits on the board of directors. Uh, really successful landscape company uh, just outside of Columbus, Ohio. Um, this is his Pinterest account. And uh, on uh, if you go to Pinterest and you look up Nick the Garden Guy, um, Nick McCullough is there, and he's got 3.28 million followers on Instagram. And he uses this as uh, kind of like inspiration boards for his prospects and current clients um, for all the repeat work that he does uh, with his current clients. Uh, I don't know anybody in the uh, landscape industry that has a bigger following on Pinterest than Nick McCullough. Um, 
Nick is the uh, Pinterest celebrity for landscaping, in my opinion. Uh, so he's a really good example of uh, what it's like to be successful uh, using social to generate business. Uh, he does lots of talks. He's, he's been speaking at a ton of conferences uh, and taking the secrets out of um, using social uh, as a platform to uh, tell your story. So check it out. Um, Nick's uh, company website is um, McLand, M-C-C-L-A-N-D.com. And his um, blog is thinkingoutsidetheboxwood.com. So check those out. And there'll be links to his Instagram and his Pinterest. Uh, and you'll definitely want to uh, go and check those out. A huge, huge example of what it's like to be successful using social. So let's look at some marketing tactics that really work. Um, like social media advertising, sponsored posts, setting up, uh, part of that is setting up an audience when you're developing either a, a boosted Facebook post or a sponsored um, Instagram post, um, identifying the geography and the demographics of that audience that you're looking for, um, both Facebook and Instagram being that Facebook owns Instagram. Um, they have really good tools to be able to create that audience. Uh, check out Google My Business. And so, you know, one of the first things that uh, a prospective client will do when, you know, they're looking for landscape companies or if they, you know, see your truck, um, you know, out as they're driving and, you know, they'll look up your company is they're going to, they're going to Google you first. And so check out Google My Business and it allows you to take ownership of your company's Google presence and put in all the details, you know, your working hours, um, how they can get in contact with you. Uh, reviews and all that kind of thing. So check out Google My Business. Um, really important to take ownership of your uh, business account on Google. Uh, Google AdWords or pay-per-click, you might have heard that term. Um, and you're developing the same idea, you're going to develop an audience and uh, you're going to uh, highlight some keywords that people might be searching on when they're looking for landscape work. Uh, and you'll come up, you'll be one of the first um, Searches, it will say add next to it, and then you have your listing um, under the Google searches. But this is a great way to generate leads. Uh, and content, so that content marketing and organic social media um, strategy, you know, putting out uh, regular content, identifying yourself as a thought leader and as an influencer within the industry will certainly get the attention of your prospective clients. Uh, email marketing, so work to develop a, a, a solid list, um, first of all, of your current clients and, you know, helping them uh, and nurture them along the way so that they'll either refer you or do more business with you. Um, and then for your prospective clients where, you know, you're constantly nurturing them um, and shooting them your content uh, by email as well. Um, promote a free consultation, you know, um, you could run um, uh, social um, contest that would get uh, someone a one hour landscape consultation. Um, these tend to work out really well for, uh, for leads and generally those that are interested in getting landscape work done, but I've never really looked into it before. We'll, uh, we'll reach out. So there's some qualifying here that needs to be done, but uh, having a contest where you can promote a free consultation works a long way too. Um, develop staff incentives for generating new business. So um, I know a couple of landscape companies that have this in place where they offer, um, I think for every uh, customer, they refer every uh, prospect um, that has a, uh, that gets to the point of presenting an estimate. They have like a $250 bonus or even a commission that's, um, that's connected uh, to that as well. So it turns everybody in the company into salespeople. Uh, so look at potentially having staff incentives for generating new business. And then uh, be part of uh, local business groups. So there's tons of uh, local business industry associations, chambers of commerce, um, you know, being part of uh, those kinds of um, business groups that where you can create relationships, you know, because Everybody has a collective network and you're just looking to amplify your message and um, using those relationships that you build to help you do that. Um, direct mail. Uh, this is a tactic that's not dead yet, uh, but because it's one of those uh, marketing tactics that 
you know, before digital, this was, you know, one of the main ways of generating business. Uh, a lot less companies are doing this. So when you do it, um, make it personal, uh, make it relevant, and um, only to um, the geography that's in your trade area. Look to speak at local events, um, you know, offer your uh, expertise up at uh, high schools, maybe colleges, uh, even elementary schools, get uh, youth excited about, um, you know, the career of uh, working in professional landscape industry. Um, there's lots and lots of uh, opportunities to uh, speak. So if that's something that you know, always want to get better at, um, consider joining Toastmasters and, uh, you know, they're a really great organization to be able to um, facilitate you getting better at public speaking. And definitely do that. Get yourself out there and speak at local events um, with local organizations. Because when you do that, you know, it just generates uh, a thought that uh, may not have ordinarily happened without your speaking opportunity. So let's look at um, marketing ROI. And um, the biggest um, thing that you're going to think about here is the five to one rule of thumb. So for every $1 spent on marketing campaigns should yield about $5 worth in revenue. So it's a five to one kind of uh, ratio that you're working with. Um, what really counts on uh, as marketing spend, like, you know, the pay-per-click that we talked about or Google AdWords, um, display ads and clicks. So if you're going to do digital advertising, uh, any media spend, so whether it's um, digital or print, uh, or radio or television, I know a few landscape companies that do radio and television ads, um, any kind of content production costs, if you're using an outside um, marketing and uh, advertising agency, so their fees uh, all go into the costs of marketing and um, those things as well. So. Um, a five to one rule of thumb is what you should think about as far as um, uh, a marketing spend. And you want to be able to get back that revenue. So um, strong, strong strategies in place. Hey, so here's that nugget that I was mentioning at the beginning of this webinar, how I was kind of saving something for the end. And it's all about social selling. Social selling is really all about being where your prospective clients are and where your current clients are and being able to connect with them where they are when they're there. Um, and like, really, why should you care? Um, I think the biggest reason is that social selling lets you build real relationships on the platforms that your prospects are using. So, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, um, they're there. Um, so you might as well be there too and uh, adding value to the discussions, adding value to content. Um, they're already engaged in social buying. So why not be there uh, at the same time? Um, make sure your uh, landscape company has a really strong presence um, on the key uh, social networks, the ones that work for you. Um, Top landscape companies are already doing this. Um, they've already infiltrated um, a lot of the local um, networks and chat groups inside of Facebook and um, lots of channels on uh, Instagram and uh, LinkedIn. So be where your audience is. And really that's why you should care is because you can build real relationships there that will translate to uh, work at the end of the day. Some of the best practices around social selling, um, you know, first of all, show up where your clients are. That's the biggest one. Um, listen strategically to identify uh, leads. Um, look at the posts and the discussions that are happening and provide value where uh, you're able to. Um, and not just posting for the sake of posting, but posting with um, the purpose of adding value building meaningful relationships that translate to uh, sales at the end of the day. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Joe Salemi uh, with Dynascape Software. I know that um, in order to uh, join us, you have to dedicate uh, some time away from your business. So thank you for taking the time.
uh, with us today. If you'd like to keep the conversation going or if you have questions, definitely get a hold of me. Um, my number uh, toll free is 1-800-710-1900 extension 279 uh, direct or uh, you can send me a text is 905-639-9668. Email address is jsalemi at dynascape.com or hit up our website, take a look at uh, what we're all about. Um, you can fill out a form, then I'll go to one of our account managers, this is dynascape.com. Join us next week for the final installment, webinar number three, in the eight pillars of successful landscape companies and how leadership drives core business operations for success. That's next Tuesday, November 19th at 1 p.m. Eastern. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next week.